I just want to talk about Jack. Talk? Just came by for a friendly chat? Is that it? I... Oh, stop it. Just stop it. I don't believe this. You threw us out of your temple eight years ago. And now you drop by for a visit? It wasn't like that. Well, what was it then? Can you tell me that? Maybe this was a bad idea. Maybe you're right, and yet you're here. Why? I will be direct. The police visited me today. Did they? Yes. What did they say? That I'm suspect number one. Really? Well, that would make sense. Who else has a motive except for the rabbi who hates us? I'll let that slide. Whatever. Jack hated you. That's enough. Mrs. Lauder, if he hated me so much, why did he leave me ten thousand dollars in his will? That's impossible. I said the same thing. Jack wouldn't do that. It's a crazy world. How do you know for sure? The police told me. I have no love of the police, but I doubt they'd lie about that. Mrs. Lauder, if Jack hated me so much, why did he give me so much money? I... I don't know. This makes no sense. None of it does. Who would kill Jack? He was a good man. Yes, he was. Don't you start. You have no idea. The police have no other leads? Aside from you? No. How did he die? I don't see how that's any of your business. I... well... I suppose I'm curious, and I'd like to... help. Help? Why would you want to help? I don't know. Maybe I... Maybe I'm just selfish. If I find the real killer, the police will get off my tail. <laughs> Why not? Why shouldn't a rabbi play at being detective? If you want to investigate Rabbi Stone, be my guest. I'll have to ask you some questions about what happened. Can't you just ask the police? They won't talk to me. I'm a suspect. Fine. Fine. Ask whatever you want. And now we start asking stuff. And, uh... Yeah, I'll just let them speak for themselves here. How did Jack die? He was shot. Right in the head. At close range, according to the police. I... I'm sorry, Mrs. Lauder. He was in the showroom, working late. That's all I know. What business was your husband in? We were in business together. Fashion design. High-end casual wear. Shirts, blouses, slacks. I'd design and he'd sell. Was the business successful? We did all right. It was tough at first, but things have been picking up over the last few years. We sell to mainly boutique stores, but Macy's has bought several pieces from us, and Saks was interested. And what happens to the business now? Are you going to run it by yourself? I guess I could, but not right away. And definitely not in that same showroom. I can understand that. Where is your showroom? Why? Do you want to have a look? It can't hurt. Oh, this is crazy. Do you really want to do this? Yes. Sure, if you want to have a look, go ahead. Just because trained police officers couldn't find anything doesn't mean a rabbi can't. The building is 1407 Broadway, room 903. And of course a rabbi is going to have a better feckin' chance than... Oh, trained police officers? <laughs> yeah, right. Trained. You've covered up the mirror. Yes, it's what you are supposed to do, right? Well, yes, but... I know. I'm not Jewish. I'm probably doing it all wrong, but it feels right. Is it right, Rabbi? I will be comforting. It's perfect. Thank you. How are you holding up, Mrs. Lauder? Fine. As well as can be expected. Hmm. What is the name of your business? Charming Fashion Company. Charming? Yeah, it's a strange name, but it has meaning behind it. It's based on my family's name, Sharma, and it sounds like charming. I get it. Real cute. Okay. Can you tell me about your company again? Sure. What do you want to know? And that just brings up these again. So, right, we're going to take our leave. I'm going to leave now. I'll see what else I can discover.
Thanks, I guess. And we're Rabbi going... Stone? Yes? About eight years ago. <laughs> could you just tell me why? Were you and Jack happy? Yes. Yes, yes we were. Then my reasons don't matter. Okay, so as I was saying, we are going to go over to Charming Fashion and have a look around. The clothing rack was empty. I supposed Mrs. Lauder took everything away. I had no need for a clothing hanger. How do you know? It's an adventure game, for Christ's sake. You're supposed to use everything. This design board was the only spark of creativity left in this deserted showroom. I didn't know much about fashion design, but it looked like a skirt, or maybe a large shirt. I couldn't think of a reason to take it with me. The office computer remained on the desk. I assumed Mrs. Lauder didn't want to be bothered with it. So let's go and do some hacking. And obviously the password must be... Sharma. Because it's the only thing we found out in relation to them, so obviously it had to be that. So let's look at the ledger here. Uh, we have outgoings. There were a lot of personal checks written out to a Joe DeMarco. I wonder who he is. Goldberg and Weiselbaum. It looked like Jack hired an accounting firm. I recognized the name. It was a clothing store. Evidently, they bought products from Jack and paid for it properly. All cut and dry. There was nothing unusual here. So that's Macy's, Moda of Broadway, Grayson Sportswear, lots and lots of Joe DeMarco, Moda, Goldberg, and Beth Tikva. And ooh, lose shipping! This payment went out to a shipping company. Nothing unusual about that. And Beth Tikva. Beth Tikva sounded like the name of a synagogue. It looked like Jack decided to stay devout after all. Well, we know that already, and we will visit the synagogue in a minute. But here's the mail. Let's start at the bottom here. Uh, to Jack Lauder from Ravnet Roman. The following message was undeliverable. The reported error was subscriber or snow does not exist on Ravnet. Oh, misspelling. How many emails have you claimed? Many. Anyway, messages as follows. Hello, Rabbi Stone. It's been a while. I hope I got the correct email address. No doubt you are surprised to hear from me. I'm not sure why I'm writing either. I often think about what you said. It still angers me, but I can understand your motives. You looked at us and said, nothing is worse than when Jews turn their backs on one another. I can still remember that look in your eyes, sheer contempt, like we were the worst sort of scum that ever crawled out of the ocean. I love my wife, Rabbi Stone. She's my partner in everything. I regret nothing. Nothing, that is, except you. I hated you. For years I hated you. We both did. I joined another temple with a rabbi who was willing to marry us and tried to forget about you. But when I found myself in trouble and in need of guidance, I could think of nowhere else to turn. You called me a traitor once. Do you still feel that way? I've seen traitors. I've seen Jews turn their backs on other Jews. It's not pretty. It's awful. I am not like them. Time has cooled my hatred. Has it done the same to you? I need to speak to you. I feel like I am twelve years old again, preparing for my bar mitzvah, and needing help with my Torah portion. I know I didn't marry a Jewish girl, or go to temple every week, or keep kosher, or do any of the many things we're supposed to do, but I always have known that I was Jewish. Is that enough? I'm not a traitor, Rabbi. I have never forgotten. I'm Jewish. Jack Lauder. Oh, it's a pity we never got that. Mr. Lauder, how are you? We are still awaiting payment transfer from you. Your goods are taking up space in our warehouse. Please submit the monies ASAP or we will be forced to liquidate them. Kenny from the shipping company. Ethan G. J. Okay, I got you into this mess. I will get you out of it. I'm meeting with JDM tonight. 
Do not write him any more checks until you hear from me. If he wants to play hardball, he picked the wrong guys to mess with. JDM. A rotten deal? Hmm. This was worth looking into. Call me now. We need to talk. And his wife said, hello, hello. The fit model cancelled again. Can she be any more useless? Okay, we'll just have to find someone else. Don't forget, we're having dinner at the Goldwaters tonight. Your instinct was right. Something isn't right with this deal. All the wire trans... Everyone has poor spelling here. Transfers lead to different places and nobody answers the phone at any of them. My accountant's sense is tingling because he got bitten by a radioactive accountant and now he has the proportional strength of an accountant. Which is probably the, you know, a little less strength than most people. Don't panic, Jack. I'll get to the bottom of this. See you at Temple tonight. Uh, let's see. How are you? Your goods are packed and ready to ship. Wire us the funds and we'll get it on the next boat. Hmm, this is strange. The rates do seem unusually high. I'll look into it. Tomo's special offer again. I got those shirt designs done. I'll send copies out to the factory to get fit samples made. And guess what? I got them! Spent an hour on the phone with Telecharge, but I got the tickets. Orchestra seats, too. I'll meet you at the office at six. No excuses this time. And that must be an oversight. I'll look into it. So yeah, I probably should have started from the top. But oh well. Now, we have to go and discuss things with Mrs. Lauder again. But first, we need to head in here because we are going to our computer again. And we are going to look up Mr. Ethan Goldberg. Because if you notice, there was Ethan G and E. Goldberg, so it must be... Ethan Goldberg! With a warm rush of triumph, I knew I found my man. Ethan Goldberg of Beth Tikva was found dead last night in a Murray Hill alleyway outside Patty O'Hare's pub, the victim of an apparent mugging. We at Ravnet express our sympathies to Ethan's friends and family. Well, that sucks. He's dead. But it's okay. We don't really need to talk to him. His dead body will tell us more than he ever could. Well, probably not, but, you know, that's the lie I'm going with. And that's that there. So we'll get to that eventually. Oops, actually, I should not have gone in here yet. Because I want to make a couple of connections in my head first. Mrs. Lauder. Oh, it come. So we'll just skip through the dialogue. And I'll I'm take going to my leave. leave. And we'll go back in here. Okay, so we're into the clues. JDM and Joe DeMarco. Joe DeMarco! JDM! That's got to be it! Haha! -ha. So the infamous Ethan G was Ethan Goldberg, and he was connected to Joe DeMarco somehow. Unfortunately, Ethan was dead and couldn't give me any answers firsthand. Based on my discoveries, Joe DeMarco evidently had a meeting with someone named Ethan. Okay, so there we go. We've got the basic things worked out. We're going to get to this. Uh, okay, that's weird. Anyway, consult our notes. And we'll start with Goldberg. Do you know an Ethan Goldberg? Oh, Ethan Goldberg. Yeah, I know him. Who is he? An accountant. We used him to handle taxes and complicated documents for the business. Not full-time, just on a consultant basis. Wait, is he involved in this? Not anymore. He's dead. What? Since when? About a week or two ago. Murdered. My God! What is happening? That's what I'm trying to figure out. 
Do you know anything about Ethan G. meeting up with Joe DeMarco? I'm afraid not. If they met, I'm sure it had something to do with the business. Ethan was our accountant, and Joe was our primary investor. Although I have no idea what they'd want to talk about. Okay, I should have clicked on Joe DeMarco first. Have you ever heard of My the fault. name Joe DeMarco? Joe? Joe! Joe! Yes, I've heard of Joe. He was one of our first investors. He invested in Sherman? Yes. Why did you need an investor? Well, we didn't have much money to start the business with. All the banks saw us as a poor risk, so we needed independent investors. Have you ever met Joe? Jack handled the money stuff, although I know Jack didn't like him. Why not? He didn't say, he just didn't like him. But we were desperate, so we had no choice. How did they meet each other? I think they were introduced. At the temple of all places. At temple? So Joe DeMarco is Jewish? Maybe. Why? DeMarco is not a very Jewish name. And that's important to you, is it? Not to me, no. But it's certainly significant. You really think Joe DeMarco is Jewish? I told you, I have no idea. And that'll do it. Now I'm we can take leave our now. leave. I'll see what else I can discover. Thanks, I guess. We are going to finally go to Temple. Here we go. Cantor's Lectern. The Cantor's Lectern was an elegant affair made from lacquered oak. It looked brand new. Meh. I've seen better. Pfft. Jealous. Services must have just ended, as they hadn't gotten around to putting the Torah away yet. I can't believe they're just leaving it here for anyone to come in and take it. They must have dozens of them in a back room somewhere. A large, tasteful stained glass window surveyed the synagogue from its high vantage point. I suppose it's okay. A tasteful podium of lacquered oak. It looked brand new and smelled of recent polish. Meh. I've seen better. The desire to scratch it with my keys was strong, but it passed. Several of the photos showed a group of children sitting around a table. Two men flanked the children, smiling at the camera like they just won the lottery. A caption read, J. Silver and E. Goldberg, on duty at the Beth Tikva Youth Center. No idea who that Jay Silver is, but eventually we'll probably find out. Yes? You're the chief rabbi here at Beth Tikva. I do carry that honor. So, what can I do for you, Mr... Uh... Rabbi, actually. Rabbi Stone. Well, fancy that. I can always spare time for a fellow rabbi. What brings you to our humble synagogue? Well, since we're rabbis... Do you know Mr. Jack Lauder? Should I know Mr. Jack Lauder? Aha! He's good at this. Don't you think you should know Jack Lauder? Why do you think so? Wasn't he a member of your congregation? Was he? Don't you know your own congregation? Am I expected to know everybody? Well... Amos broke out into an angelic smile. Are you finished? I guess. Wonderful. Hmm. <laughs> he was a member of your congregation. He died a few days ago. That's right. The funeral service was yesterday. I honestly don't know where my head is these days. You conducted the ceremony? Yes. His wife insisted on it. Did she now? If I may ask, what is your interest in Mr. Lauder? Uh, rabbinical? Aren't all matters of our flock our concern? Uh, well, not every matter. But still, we do what we can, don't we? Right, well, I'll ask about him a bit more. Is there anything you can tell me about Mr. Lauder? I'm afraid not, Rabbi Stone. My congregation is rather large, and Mr. Lauder seldom attended services. I'm sure I don't need to tell you what that's like. You certainly don't. Ooh, burn. Okay, let's, uh, Goldberg. I was hoping you could tell me something about Ethan Goldberg. I know he used to work here. Ethan? 
Oh, what a tragedy. That man did wonders for this community. It's a shame what happened to him. You know about his death? Of course. I conducted the funeral service myself. I recently found out that Ethan Goldberg and Jack Lauder did business together. Really? I'm not surprised. Ethan offered his services to many people. He was a whiz with an adding machine. So I heard. And Joe DeMarco. Does the name Joe DeMarco mean anything to you? DeMarco? Yes. Sounds Italian. Other than that, it means nothing. Sorry. Hmm. Do you know anything about Ethan G. meeting up with Joe DeMarco? In all honesty, I have no idea who Joe DeMarco is. So I'm afraid the answer is no. Did a Joe DeMarco ever belong to this temple? DeMarco... That's hardly a Jewish name. I know. Although, it's difficult to say. As I told you, it's difficult to keep track of individual congregation members in members. He was an investor in Jack Lauder's company. Does that mean anything to you? I don't know. Should it? No, I suppose not. And after all that, you will get this. Doesn't any of this strike you as odd? Should it? Two Jewish men, both in business together and both belonging to the same synagogue, are killed within two weeks of each other. A third man, who may or may not be Jewish, is nowhere to be found. There are only two connections between these three men. One is Jack's business, the other is this synagogue. Rabbi Stone, I hope you're not suggesting anything... I'm not. Let me finish. People all over the world use religious communities to network and conduct business. This is nothing new. You know this, Rabbi Stone. If there is a connection, it has to do with their business dealings and nothing to do with Beth Tikva. I won't stand for our reputation being tarnished. Do I make myself clear? As crystal. I'm glad we understand each other. Now, if you'll excuse me, it is rather late. I understand. I'll see myself out. Wait, let me give you my card. Feel free to email me if you have any more questions. And now we are completely done there. And we are about to move on and do the only other thing I know how to do. And once we get to that point, we will have to figure shit out as it comes. So, we are going to log into the other rabbi's email account. And his email is Rabbi Z, and you need a clue for his password, and it is pet. And his pet was called Dodger. And there we are, we're in! So, I'll read his emails, and I might even start reading a few really shit jokes. So let's go into his emails. And right up at the top, same welcome email we got. And hello Rabbi Zelig. So you finally joined the 21st century, eh? It's about time. Haha, <laughs> Mazeltov, etc. Uh, just wanted to congratulate you on another hair-raising sermon today. Everyone was glued to their seats. See you next Friday. Jeff Kotak. For your network protection needs, contact Tomo. Dear Rabbi Zelig, my name is Jared from the Jewish Weekly. I have heard of your recent philanthropic activities and was wondering if you'd consent to an interview. Please feel free to contact me anytime. Uh, what do we got here? Rabbi Zelig, just got back home. Thanks for giving me a tour of your temple. It's interesting to see how things are done in the big city. Your sermon was, as always, awe-inspiring. You were right. Times have changed since Bible times, but people sure haven't. Thanks again, Amos. Be sure to look me up the next time you're in our neck of the woods. David Small. Rabbi, I'm a bit concerned about this investor you sat Jack up with. Can you tell me what you know about him? <gasps> That's Joe he's talking about. So the rabbi does know him. Yo, Rabbi, thanks for the kiss ticks. Happy we could be of service. So the rabbi got tickets for a kiss for some guy called Tim. 
Rabbi Zelig, I appreciate that you took the time to help us out. We were cash poor and in serious need of help, but I can't help but be concerned. Are you sure this investor is on the up and up? He has money, certainly, but the man gives me the serious creeps. We need the money, so I will accept his money for now, but I was hoping you could tell me more about him. Thanks. Jack. <gasps> the Thick Plottens. Amos, if that Goldberg character has been making waves, you know what to do. Dun-dun-dun! He's got an email from Joe. Got your message? Ethan's been giving me trouble, so that's not a problem. I'll get in touch when I chat with him. Uh-oh. This is the end of the emails. We're getting down there now. Rabbi, I just wanted to write and tell you how excellent your service was. My friend dragged me on Friday, even though I don't usually do the temple thing. I've already signed up. Um, you've got a new member, so I'll be going to your temple from now on. I'm already looking forward to next Friday. See you then, Jennifer, San Jennifer Sandman. And Thank you, Rabbi Zelig, for the lovely service you performed for my, for my husband, Ethan. Your kind words and wonderful anecdotes put everyone at ease, especially me. As you know, Ethan worked very hard for the Jewish community and to a lesser extent Beth Tikva, and I'm sure he is very happy to know his work was appreciated. Thank you again, Rabbi Zelig. I will see you bright and early Friday night. Ooh, you're an evil man, Rabbi. Rabbi, the police are asking me about Ethan. I told them who he was meeting, but they say it's not important. Not important? How can this not be important? Rabbi, why aren't you doing something? I'm sure he has something to do with this. What have you gotten us mixed up in? Dun dun dun! Rabbi Zelig, thank you for answering my questions. The article will appear next week. Rosangela? Hmm <laughs> hmm! Rosangela Blackwell. Interesting. Calm down. Ethan is dead. I fear for my life. Your so-called investor is demanding more interest and is threatening me and my wife. You tell me to calm down? How could you do this? How could you get us involved with a creep like that? Don't tell me you're not involved. When I think of you looking all holy and pious during Ethan's funeral service, I want to throw up. I can't even tell my wife. I'm so ashamed of myself. I, to think I was so blinded by greed that I couldn't see beneath the surface. I was better off with Stone. He was pig-headed and arrogant, but at least you knew where you stood. Watch your back, Rabbi. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Don't think this is over. You call yourself a Jew? Jack. Ooh. Joe DeMarco. You're certainly keeping me busy. I got your message. I'll let you know when it's done. Rabbi Zelig, I am not Jewish myself, but Jack was very devout, and I felt I owed it to him to give him a proper Jewish funeral. Thank you so much for your help, and for answering all my questions. I'm sure Jack would have appreciated the effort and care you put into the service. I'm going to try to prepare a proper shiva. You are welcome to come by and to pay your respects. Thanks again, Rashre Lauder. Oh, you are a bad man, Rabbi Zelig. Anyway, it's time for crappy jokes. Moshe was talking to his psychiatrist. I had a weird dream recently, he said. I saw my mother, but then I noticed she had your face. I found this so worrying that I immediately awoke and couldn't get back to sleep. I just stayed there thinking about it until 7 a.m. I got up, made myself a slice of toast and some coffee and came straight here. Can you please help me explain the meaning of my dream? The psychiatrist kept silent for some time, then said, One slice of toast and coffee? Do you call that a breakfast? <sighs> Believe me, they... they get worse. Martin Lewis converts and becomes a priest. He gives his first mass in front of a number of high-ranking priests who come for the occasion. At the end of the new priest's sermon, a cardinal goes up to congratulate him. Pastor Lewis, he said, that was very well